My team and I have always believed in the first two principles. We just, we realize the elegant simplicity of how things work and the way we honor that elegant simplicity and, and that elegant complexity is, is to create a system. Now, notice, uh, I, I wrote another word up here because the young gray cook thought I could create a program, a workout, a warm-up, a stretch or an exercise that would fix all the bad things. But there's no inoculation or vaccination in the world that will protect you from everything. Some push you in one direction and some push you in another. So I quickly dropped the theory that I could design a prepackaged, easily dispensable program that would fix the complex movement issues that you're going to confront in your life. So I quit being a program guy looking for one program that changes it. Because what I found out is you like somebody's success, um, I think I'm going to do their program. Well, adopt their whole culture. Eat what they eat, sleep how they sleep, live how they live, laugh like they laugh, study like they study, train like they train. Do everything in their culture or nothing at all. Because if you just pick the few things that are shiny to you, they're probably not the things that are going to make the difference in you, and they're only part of the other person's success. There's only one other way. You either got to go full immersion and adopt the culture of the people you want to be, or you got to measure yourself against them and then find out what you're not covering and what you've completely covered. So I could easily go into a team and take the top 10 most productive contributors. I'm not talking about the superstar. I'm talking about the people who are always there, who always play, who get hurt less than most people, who get tired uh, less than most people. They're just durable performers. What does that mean? It doesn't mean a great game. It means a great five-year career. Find me those people on any given team, in any environment, in any occupation. Find me that percentage, the people that just do more with less no matter what. They're more resourceful, but they've got the resources to cover it. I will measure their physical fitness, their functional movement, their health. I'll measure everything and say, listen, the reason you're not them has nothing to do with your health, your function, or your fitness. They're more resourceful with the resources than you are. Or I'll say the exact opposite. You're missing power. They've got more power than you. Oh, we're marathoners? I know, but the marathoners that are beating you actually test with more power than you. Even though marathons aren't a power sport, they're an endurance sport, these people know how to springy, get that integrity a little quicker than you. So the only test that you flunked against the marathoners that are beating you is your power test. Not because marathons are a power sport, because they have not given up some of that vital power to get their endurance. So you've got a physical barrier to skill acquisition because you haven't covered the physical profile of the people beating you. Once you have, I think you're going to have to admit it's a processing problem, it's a technical problem, it's a creativity problem, it's a tactical problem. You don't know how to win, but you've got all the physical blocks in place. That's different and we need to make sure people know what they're doing. My friends and I created a system, and that system is just a series of a bunch of little screens. We've got a movement health screen. What's the vital sign you've got to have for movement health? No pain with movement. That's one of the easiest ones. What's the vital sign for movement function? Cover the minimal acceptable movement pattern qualities in each of the patterns. We've also got screens for fitness or performance or what we like to call the physical resources of movement or the capacities. And it all fits together. If you're healthy enough, then that means you can grow and repair. If you're functional enough, that means your body can communicate clean information to your brain so your brain can learn to move. And if you're fit enough, that means you have the capacity to stay in the batter's box long enough to learn to be a batter. Stay on the tennis court long enough to learn to play tennis. But if your physical support and your function will not let you stay on the tennis court as long as everybody else, then you restrict your ability to learn to do that skill. So you got to have the physical base or the soil to plant the seed of tennis into. And once you've got that soil, we found that a good thorough tennis development program keeps you fit while you're learning tennis. You don't have to do supplementary stuff in a well-constructed skill development program. The other cool thing is if you're covering everything you're supposed to, your function and your health don't get worse either. So once we've gotten you there, we can design better training methodology just based on are you maintaining your vital signs? Have we 
protected you from behaviors that could otherwise put you at risk or just keep you from good feedback. You're not going to make good decisions here. Don't do the behavior. So when we get all the way down to create the system, we tried to build screens that helped us make the next best decision. And that's one of the things that, that, that I think a lot of people look at FMS and look at what we've done with the SFMA and other things, and they simply only look at this, not understanding that we nailed these principles as good as we could with what we've got. We didn't go high tech. And one of the things that I like to make an analogy of is when you're looking through a camera lens, there's two ways that you can adjust things. When you focus, you create clarity. And when you zoom, you basically delete all other perspectives, but really zoom in on one perspective. And I said this in the movement book a long time ago. I think one of the biggest problems in healthcare and fitness, athletic development, and even injury risk management and in industry is the fact that we zoom in on a problem before we get clear on what we're looking at. And we didn't write this operating system. The human movement operating system was not written by a human. Now, every other operating system and every other tech device you have was written by a human and can be hacked by a slightly smarter human. We can't hack this system because we didn't write this software. But we can learn to read it better and feed it what it needs because the way you program the human neurological system is not through direct commands put through a keyboard that uploads on your brain. It is changing the way our brain perceives the way it's going to handle the next environmental exposure, the next attack, the next combat, the next competition, the next exercise. Are you going to be effective and are you efficient when you're doing it? A lot of times we flip those two. We try to be efficient before we're effective. Isn't that a problem in healthcare right now? They're trying to save money making you well. They're not trying to make you well first. Make me well first and then see how cheaply you can do it and cheaply I can afford it. That would work better. These three principles are going to be an operating system for every question you could ever ask our, our system. And that's why even if you don't adopt our system, I'm pretty sure if you don't at least point your system at these principles, you're going to wind up where we've been. And I want to wind up where we're going. For more information, visit functionalmovement.com.